Hi, my name is Jason Brown. Welcome to my Civil War videos. Uh, I created these for Boone County 4-H to pass on to my uh, fifth grade students. In this video, you're going to learn about the student, or you're going to learn about the uh, soldier's life as far as uniform, the things they were issued as far as accoutrements, uh, how they slept, uh, some things related to their life in the Union Army in those areas. At the beginning of the war, soldiers, uh, the units north and south, oftentimes they would have their own uniforms per company and then per regiment. So it could be pretty confusing at the beginning of the war. But by uh, about 1862 in the north, the standard army issued uniform would be what I was wearing right now today. You'd be issued a forage cap. And now, uh, it's a primary issued hat. And the reason they call it a forage cap is if you're out foraging or looking for food, you can often turn this hat upside down it has sort of like a, a sort of a basket there and if you could find a farmer who had eggs you could put some eggs in there maybe an apple orchard something like that you could load that up and so they would be issued a forage cap the bill would be straight today a lot of baseball hats we turn the bill down so it had a curved angle back then the style was to keep the bill straight pointing straight up and they would have it cocked over slightly at the side here and they would, if you've ever heard that term, don't get cocky, that's where that comes from, having your hat at a cocked angle, uh, giving it attitude. They'd also be issued a fatigue blouse, and that's the outer blue coat garment. It's made of all wool flannel, and on the inside, it has a wool layer. It can be pretty hot in the summertime. Remember, at this time in history, a lot of what they do is related to covering the body thoroughly, not only to protect the body, but also because of modesty. Now, if we took the fatigue blouse off here, they would have been issued a regular army issued uh, flannel shirt that you see me wearing there. Pretty primitive. You know, there's no button down. There's a single button at the top. It's made out of a very rough uh, cotton material. They used to call them old hair shirts because on the inside it would get very itchy. And really until you've sweated in them several times to build an oil layer up, it would be quite uncomfortable. Of course, I'm wearing trousers here. And so the trousers are also 100% wool flannel. Uh, and underneath the trousers, the soldier is going to have a pair of drawers or long underwear. Now, those long underwear issued by the Army was meant to protect their body from the oftentimes uh, itchy and harsh wool. And also, the way the, layer of the, the, the layering of the drawers underneath were meant to keep us cool in the summer when it's hot and warm in the winter when it's cold. Also, I'm wearing the Army-issued brogans. Okay, it's a basic shoe there. Now our shoes today have nice insoles. They're nice and comfortable, and they they basically uh, give us support and cushioning. Shoes back then, whether they were military issued or not, oftentimes just a leather body, a hard leathered uh, sole on the bottom. I would assume that they oftentimes were used to wearing those kind of outfits and items. But us today, like as an example, if I'm at a living history event, after a weekend of marching, my feet will hurt uh, quite a bit. But this would have been the typical Army-issued uniform that they would have received, especially after 1862, when uniforms in the North became pretty standardized. When men would enlist, they would first be issued their accoutrements. The accoutrements would be uh, things that they would need for their military job to be able to carry that out. Obviously, they would be issued... Uh, early in the war, they'd be either issued a 1861 Springfield or this, an 1853 Enfield rifled musket. And we're going to talk about the rifled musket here in just a little bit, and I'm going to place that off to the side. As far as the things that would be issued, early in the war, soldiers were told to bring their own blankets if they could. Uh, but by the war, uh, eight, late 1861-62, they're being issued items that they'll carry with them. If you've ever been to a living history event, you might have seen tents and things like that set up. But in most cases at events, uh, you're seeing something that maybe isn't always the authentic replication. Soldiers would be issued the bare minimum so they could march and travel efficient, efficiently without carrying a lot of items with them. And so their bedding oftentimes would consist of just a simple gum blanket. It's a rubberized blanket and on the inside, it's a light canvas on the outside is sort of the rubber coating. It's just to protect them from the ground, protect them from the rain, uh, things like that that they would have to endure. They'd also be issued a wool blanket. Now in the summertime, a lot of soldiers, 
they wouldn't even want to carry or deal with this because it's so hot. So oftentimes they would just throw it by the roadside and get rid of it. But in the winter time, this wool blanket, it's thick, it's a very tight weave. Uh, it is, weighs about five and a half pounds as far as its weight. Uh, this was something that was very beneficial to them. But really the gum blanket, the wool blanket, and maybe a tent half that they could put the tents together and share with somebody else is what they had. As far as their military accoutrement, well, let's back up for a second and add one, a couple more things to that. Uh, canteens, it'd be issued a canteen to carry water in. I know not very exciting, canteens have not changed much in the last 150 years. They would also be issued a haversack, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the haversack uh, when we get to it here in just a little bit. But as far as military accoutrements, they would be issued a cartridge box, and you see the sling that goes across the front there, and the cartridge box here, if you flip the top, it's got an inner covering right there to protect the powder from the rain. Powder gets wet, their rounds are useless. Well, why is that? Because at that time, cartridges were actually made out of paper. We're gonna talk more about that here in a little bit as well. So we'll put that right back in there. But they were made out of paper, so they had to keep them dry. They'd also be issued a cap box. And again, we'll talk about the caps here in just a little bit, but that is what they had there. On the inside, there's a wool lining to keep the caps dry. And you'll understand later when I talk about the fact that they have to stay perfectly dry, why that is. They'd also be issued their scabbard for their bayonet. And we'll talk more about what the bayonet's purpose was here when we get to that video here in just a second. But these would be the primary things that they would be issued uh, during the Civil War.